Your Excellency, uh, Dr. Sid Ota, first Vice President of Ongoing Bureau and chairing the Ministers of Economic Affairs um, and the Minister of Economic Affairs of, and Development of Mauritania. Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and special guests to this STC, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda and Prime Minister Hail Mariam Dusalen of Ethiopia and our, our host as the AUNECA here. Your Excellencies, former Heads of State and members of the Africa Forum, my brother, Dr. Carlos Lopez, Executive Secretary, Excellencies, Ministers of Finance, Economy, Planning and Integration from Member States, Excellencies, Officials from the Capital, Excellencies, Officials from the AU and uh, ECA, and my colleagues, uh, commissioners from the AU, the governors of African Central Banks, representatives of the UN family and members of the diplomatic corps, intellectuals, and warm greeting to everybody who's here. A very warm welcome to the opening session of this inaugural meeting of the AU Specialized Technical Committee of Ministers of Finance, Monetary Affairs, Economic Planning, Integration, and of course, the eighth conference of the African Ministers of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development. Of course, this is a joint meeting, and it's taking place at a very critical time for development in Africa when the need for integrated approaches, paradigm shifts, and coordination has never been greater. We all know now that in January 2015, the AU Summit of Heads of State did adopt Agenda 2063. After more than two years of consultations with the African citizen refest uh, from all walks of life, followed by governments and regs. Now, a lot of people tell us Agenda 2063 is ambitious. Um, but, you know, one of my high school principals once said that a person who's not ambitious is a danger to society. So, I don't know why it's a problem if this is ambitious. It shouldn't be. We should, Africans have a right to be ambitious, and we are. And we want to ensure that within the coming five decades, Africa becomes a continent that is integrated, people-centered, peaceful, and prosperous, and plays a dynamic role in the world. It's a long-term vision that takes account of the lessons from our past, of the national and global opportunities and challenges of the present situation, and a roadmap towards realizing realization of a better Africa for its citizens, for young and old, men and women, boys and girls. Now, one of the things that our agenda 2063 prioritizes. I'll just talk about a few. I'm, I'm glad my brother has, talk, has spoken about trade and industrialization. But I think nothing will happen about Agenda 2063 without ensuring that we invest in our people, because it's our people that are going to drive everything, whether it's industrialization, infrastructure, uh, whatever we want to do will depend on our people. And we have actually seen examples of that, that even Africa is, is rich, 
but the foreign minister of Namibia says Africa is rich, but the Africans are poor. And we must change that. We can't have a rich con continent, but its people are poor. But we have examples of countries who do not have most of the things we have here. We have abundant human resources. We have abundant mineral resources. We have abundant arable land. We have abundant natural resources, sun, sunshine. But why are we poor? Why are Africans poor? But we have examples like, I won't go outside the continent, I'll remain with the continent. Mauritius, if we take Mauritius, they don't have many of the things I've mentioned, but they have people. They've invested in their people, and their people have figured out what to do, and Mauritians are not poor. And I can quote a few others. So if we invest in our people, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I've been minister in my own country. Sometimes health, education is seen, are seen as ministries that are just a bottomless pit of spending. They are not seen as a critical investment for economic development for the development, social, cultural development of the country. And I think it's important that we see the investment in our people as the first prerequisite for all these things that we are going to talk about to happen, for Agenda 2063 to happen. So, and we must begin to shift the focus. I'm not saying we, we do only, but we shift the focus to STEM areas, maths, science, technology, engineering, are going to be very important going forward. And I'm glad that there are countries which are already doing that. And I hope the Prime Minister of Ethiopia who is here will share what they are doing in that area. And they are doing very well. And it can be done. Because this skills revolution is a necessary ingredient for the success of Agenda 2063. So we need thousands and thousands more engineers, scientists, geologists, architects, town planners, you name it, health professionals, teachers, you name it. We need thousands and thousands of those. And we attended a meeting not so long ago, maybe three weeks ago in Dakar on higher education, and all our most of our institutions of higher learning were there, and all the uh, NGOs and philanthropists who are interested in higher education were there. And it was agreed that we need to develop the talents of our people in order for us to have this shared prosperity. The second area I want to just focus on is that this year is the year of women's empowerment. Last year, it was the year of agriculture. And I'll just share with you what women want to do in agriculture. The women in agriculture in Africa, they are the biggest workforce actually in agriculture. And they would like to have improved access or to have land rights. Most of them don't have land rights, but they are in agriculture. Most of them don't have access to capital they don't have access to technology. So they don't even have assistance from extension services. And so their productivity is low. 
they remain poor. And so what should we do? Because I think Agenda 2063 should be a practical, we should be looking at practical things. The first thing they've said they want to do and that we should all do is to banish the hand hole to the museum. And indeed it is a, a shame and what, maybe an indictment on all of us that our women in agriculture are still using the handheld hoe. So Agenda 2063 wants to the handheld hoe to disappear from the face of our continent in 10 years, and it should be possible. We have actually looked at what are the alternatives. We have looked at tillers. There are various sizes of tillers. A reasonable, a reasonable tiller will start at about $300. Of course, the most expensive is $5,000, but a $1,000 tiller can do most of the things that need to be done. So we are starting a campaign this year to start replacing the hoe with the tillers. Where possible, tractors, but what we think is, is, is very possible and practical is tillers. We want to start this campaign, and by the end of the year, we would have started it. But the campaign can only succeed if ministers of finance and heads of state support it. And I'm sure you, you surely support it, don't you? But the second thing is not just to assist women in agriculture, it's also to make agriculture attractive to young people. We don't see young people wanting to go to agriculture and we don't blame them. What young person is going to want to go and use a handheld tool today? the 21st century. They will not, and I can't blame them. So if we bring technology, it is also a way of attracting young people, but it means also a field that a woman would be hoeing for a week with a hand hold to hold, they might do in a day. So they will have more time to do other things. Secondly, they don't have access to finance. But we all know, everybody says this, that women, when they are given a loan, they pay to the last penny or to the last cent. But the financial institutions have not changed their mind and the way they do things. They still are very hesitant to give women financial assistance, and young people. So we want to start talking to the financial institutions, and I hope the ministers of finance will also help us on this, to ensure that women have access to finance. And of course, the irrigation is one of the things also that can assist them. A bit of training in, 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 in modern technologies is important. But this may transform agriculture, but we also want women to move to the next stage. Young people also of agro-processing and becoming and take, taking part in agribusiness. I'm concentrating on women, I'm not excluding men, farmers, or they need all this, but I'm concentrating on women because they are the majority, but their productivity is very low. And if we improve their productivity, they can get more resources and families can be more resourced 
and kids can go to school and many other things. So this is a practical thing that we can do in these 10 years as part of Agenda 2063. And the other thing that I would like to talk about on Agenda 2063 is that women generally need to participate in all decision-making areas, in all areas of human endeavor, not just in parliament, not just in government, but in academics, in the judiciary, in everything. It's important because if we are to develop to our full potential as a continent, we need to use all our talent. And of course, it is possible to get women in all these areas. But I'll just use maybe parliament for now, because I know we are having about 14 countries that are going to go into national elections. And we'll be electing new parliamentarians. And we hope that all of them will have women between 30 and 50% in their list. And this is possible, and I hope that President Kagame, who's here, will say something about it. Because we are very proud that 14 of our countries have passed the international threshold of 30%, but only 14 have, means 40 haven't. But we are proud because the leading country in the world in terms of women in parliament is sitting with us here, leading the world, not leading the continent. And that's Rwanda at 64% of women in parliament. So it's doable. It's doable. Let's do it. And of course, it doesn't it shouldn't end in, with parliament, though parliament is very important because that's where laws are made. And if you bring women into parliament in, critical, in a critical mess, they will bring different perspectives. They'll also be very people-centered. They'll make sure that there's clean water in the homes and children don't die of diarrheal diseases. They make sure that there's energy in the homes they'll make sure that everything that affects a human being is attended to. So it's an area that, as this is the year of women, 20 years after Beijing, we must be looking at. And in June, we're working with uh, my brother there, Carlos, we're going to bring an index that's going to be a baseline of where all of us are in terms of women participation in all areas of human endeavor. So that we can say when we started Agenda 2063, this is where we were. And we are going to be, of course, looking at this index almost every year to see where there are improvements and to discuss what, why there are no improvements, what are the bottlenecks, share experiences of those who are succeeding. Because, again, we should be really driving this in Agenda 2063. So we are going to bring that index. And of course, we'll be very honored to praise those who are making good progress and to encourage those who are not to follow suit. And of course, when women participate in the economy, the GDP of our countries will move even faster. Then the last area that I want to just touch on is the area of infrastructure. But maybe before I go that, I just want to say we'll be having a round table with financial institutions this year to begin to have a dialogue with them about
giving access to finance to women. And when we talk finance, we're not only going to be talking microfinance, because microfinance, microcredit has become synonymous to women. When we talk about financing women, micro this, micro that, there's nothing micro about us. So let me just touch on infrastructure. Again, my brother Carlos talked about trade. But if we are to, to improve our trade, our movement of people and goods, it's important to get infrastructure going. A lot is happening, but a lot more needs to happen. And of course, Agenda 2063, the first 10 years is also uh, concentrating because we have PIDA, we have uh, energy programs, we have uh, transport programs, but we want those accelerated in the first 10 years so that indeed what we produce can circulate amongst us so that our people can be able to move freely by air, by road, by rail, and these are, will, will form part of the flagship projects of Agenda 2063. And we, we also want to begin to just say, yes, free movement of people and goods, it also means that our people should be able to move within the continent freely. ECOWAS is doing very well on that within ECOWAS, and I think they are a shining example. But there are also countries, and East Africa is following, and I hope that the other RECs will also follow. There are also countries that have decided to remove visa restrictions for all Africans. And I don't know whether it's the president or the fact that he also works with a lot of women and men in his cabinet, or a combination that Rwanda is also leading on this. They've removed all restrictions for Africans. I can get into a claim now. I can get into a plane now, go to Rwanda. I don't have to via their embassy for a visa. But it's interesting because a lot of our big countries sometimes say they fear that they'd be swamped if they open up and this and the other. Rwanda is one of the smallest countries, if not the smallest. But it has only reaped benefits from doing that. It hasn't seen major disadvantages. And I hope the president can share with us on that. Because integration means also that. So these are the few things that I also just wanted to share with you. And to say that integration is our raison d'etre. And so we have to look at all the areas of integration, including broadband, Again, East Africa is leading on this, and President Kagame is the African Union champion on ICT. And they've even removed roaming fees, which we all suffer from in our various regions. They've removed roaming fees, they've not lost revenue, but they've improved, because traffic has improved in some instances it has trebled, some instances it has doubled. So I think sharing some of these will make us realize that these things are possible and we can share experiences and how they did it, but we need the agenda of 2063, the Africa we want, to be characterized by implementation of practical things. I thank you.